Some people have been under the quaint illusion that this channel is about politics, and it was about politics on a granular level for a couple of years, but I've never really thought about it as a politics channel. I've always thought about it as a channel about framework. Now, I use the term framework or frame on this channel quite a lot, but I've never actually described what it means. Frameworks go by a lot of different names. You could call them worldviews, or you could call them maps. This is how I conceptualize a framework. There are probably other ways of conceptualizing a framework, but this is just my framework about frameworks, a meta framework, if you will. The way I think about frameworks is a set of axioms that make up a belief about the world. There are philosophical frameworks like panpsychism, whose axioms are something like every living being has consciousness, every non-living being also has consciousness, the universe is conscious in and of itself, and then you know from those axioms they build up into more granular points about reality. That's a broad framework, a philosophical, a metaphysical framework. Every sentence is a framework, this sentence is a framework. But of course, the frameworks that I explored over the last couple of years have been political frameworks. Political ideologies, every ideology is a framework. It posits some things about reality or humans or the world, and those posits, those axioms, those things that you're just supposed to take at face value, um, are used to build up a full view of the world. And this view of the world is sort of like a filter. You get information, you shove it through your framework, and then that framework tells you if the information is good, if it's bad, if it should make you happy or angry or sad. And over the last couple of months, I've been dipping my toe into other frameworks, like personality frameworks. So let's dig deep into an example. Let's take anarcho-communism. Anarcho-communism is a political framework, a political ideology, you could say, that posits certain axioms about the world and people. Anarcho-communists believe in classless, stateless, moneyless societies. So, some of the axioms that might make up an anarcho-communist framework might be um, money is not inherent to human nature. They might also posit centralized power will always become corrupted and that humans are better off organized without class and without rigid hierarchy than with rigid hierarchy. All right, now let's look at the opposite of an anarcho-communist framework. We could call it a national capitalist framework. This is an ideology that focuses on having a moneyed society, a classed society, and a state-run centralized authority. So some axioms might be capitalism is inherent to human nature, and centralized power is the best way to control and manage uh, society and hierarchies are natural or beneficial to humanity. It's from these philosophical axioms that ideas and sets of ideas are built. Um, you could look at both the anarcho-communist framework and the national capitalist framework and say, I see flaws in both of these frameworks. And if you do that, good job, congratulations, wow, good for you. Inherent to everybody is this wall. I will say, a layer of protection against ideas. And when presented with ideas, the wall will say, nope, stop right there, idea. You're not kidding, you're not coming one foot in here. And this is a protection mechanism, and it's good. Some people, however, we might, we might call them open people. Um, that door is wide open, and the ideas are just rushing in. One mistake you might make when it comes to frameworks is when presented with a framework that doesn't make sense to you, you knock it down and you assume it's absurd, ridiculous, shouldn't even be entertained. Now, you have that closedness to your brain for a reason. Your brain, you can't be accepting every idea. Sometimes you have to live within the idea that you are examining, that you choose to believe. And sometimes you have to live within that idea on a guttural level, on an axiomatic level. You have to say, maybe there is something worth considering over here, but I'm over here. And I don't want to even know what's worth considering over there. I want to live out this belief that I have. And in living out that belief, you may find that you iron out some of the contradictions. The reason the anti-centrist framework is not satirical or ironic is because in order to truly embody the framework, I must take it dead seriously. The longer this framework is embodied, the longer the apparent contradictions iron themselves out. It's one thing to say, mm, the anarcho-communist axioms, I don't buy them. I don't want to think about them. 
No, it is another thing entirely to join an anarchist commune and live out that framework and see what happens to you. It's very easy to uh, be critical of frameworks. Um, when you look at them, when you zoom out and you see the structure as it's built, instead of just living within that structure, you see the little holes, the little gaps, the little places where, you know, it's a little wiggly over here. And maybe if just this happens, the whole thing comes crumbling down and you don't want to live within the structure, within the framework. And that's fine to an extent. But if you keep doing that with every single thing, every single way that you can be, every single method of thinking, then you may find yourself in a world of noise. And noise isn't good. Noise isn't good at all. But first, let me quickly tell you about my sponsor, Ground News. Ground News also deals in frameworks. It tells you about different news articles that are operating off of different frameworks. You can use these different news articles as lenses, each lens interpreting information in a different way. You can use a conservative framework and a liberal framework to interpret the same piece of news to get your own framework the gears turning in your little head, in that little head of yours. Brown news sounds interesting. Use the link in the description below. I'll be talking about them in future videos as well. The absence of a framework is what I call noise. This is because information is coming at you and you have no structure with which to sort through the information and figure out what's important, how it should make you feel. You don't know how things make you feel. And the thing is, you never truly lack a framework. There are always these baseline subconscious ways of interpreting reality that your brain just does. So whether or not you pick a framework, frameworks have already picked you. So that's why if you are a person that lives in noise, it's good for you to lower your suspicion to ideas, find things that you axiomatically, emotionally want to believe, and then just believe that. And you'll find that those parts of the framework that didn't make sense to you before now do. A framework is a lot like a metaphysical belief that you have only on faith. And there are, you know, things that you can do to prop up that faith. You can find nice little articles and nice little studies, and maybe you can get yourself 99% secure against all the different information that there might be out there in the world attacking your point of view. So I mentioned earlier, openness, closeness. You can imagine an open person, sort of like an open door, information is just going in, going out. A closed person operating within a more rigorous, more structured framework. An open person might be more self-aware about the framework that they're inhabiting, or they might be self-aware that they're actively not inhabiting frameworks. Um, a closed person might just inhabit their framework and find it impossible to believe that there are other people who have different frameworks than them. You might also associate openness and closeness with the propensity for people to live in the world of ideas. You don't understand, Dad. I live in Aristotle's world of forms. So an open person might be very interested in frameworks and be like, what is what makes this framework tick? Whereas a closed person might be more interested in a car because a car is a physical object and more interested in taking apart the car and seeing how the car You goes. get one guess. You get one guess as to which one I am. One guess. That's right. I love cars. Now pause. What am I doing here? I'm talking about open people, I'm talking about closed people. I'm making some assumptions as to what open people want and what closed people want. Now, what's going on here? You just got frameworked, buddy. I am using the uh, O of the ocean model, the openness, uh, as openness to experience as a framework. I'm taking this framework that already exists and I am using it to explain certain things to you. This too is a framework. You know, it's built off of some axioms. The axiom of the ocean model is something like um, humans can be represented personality-wise through five spectrums, which is openness, close, uh, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. But I really like this framework. I don't know if it's perfect, but I don't really care if it's perfect or want it to be perfect. I know that it's used in studies. I like it a lot more than the Myers-Briggs way of uh, categorizing people. And so... You know, I just, I just use that. I use that a lot. It's a framework that I try to live within, inhabit. I think about the world in these terms. And I think about people in these terms. Is it just a framework? Yeah, of course it's just a framework, but everything is just a framework. And after a certain point, you gotta be like, well, this one seems promising. I'm going to try it out. With that, I want to use openness to experience as an axiom. 
and say that there are some people who are more open to experience and some people who are less open to experience. And then I want to use that framework to draw an interesting conclusion. Open people are more absorbed by the psychic realm. So they're the people who are going to be thinking about frameworks, being self-aware about themselves, maybe even painfully self-aware if they're neurotic as well. Closed person, probably more likely to just live within the house that they've built for themselves. Nobody is like completely impenetrable in terms of their mind. Everyone is susceptible to ideas and can be influenced in certain ways. And you know, nobody is totally open and just completely drifting. Everyone has certain fundamental aspects of themselves that keep them coherently them. Their ego is intact. I posit that closed people are more likely to not be able to accept contradictions within their worldview. Whereas an open person might be more willing to accept those contradictions because they are more aware of the contradictions inherent to basically every worldview. It's actually a little bit poisonous to get outside your own head and start viewing things as structures of belief because then you might, you do run the risk of getting into the noise state. And that's why I'm very adamant against, you know, getting into that noise state, getting into that, that I mean, like, it's not even nihilism because nihilism is a comfortable framework and noise is some kind of psychosis. So, okay, so let's keep working within this openness framework. What else, what other conclusions can we draw when we start taking openness and closeness seriously? Another thing that I believe, based off this axiom that I've drawn for myself, is that open people ha are more generative. They're more progressive in the strictest sense, in the sense of, um, moving, moving, motion, progress, but like not all progress is good progress. I think anyone could agree that if we progress towards, um, you know, everyone has to shoot themselves in the head. Is that good progress? I don't know. Maybe mm, voluntary human extinction movement. Anybody openness is simply your propensity towards having ideas that don't fit into the social framework. And not all those ideas are going to be good. Uh, you know, God makes these open people and they, they go off and they have a billion different ideas and sometimes it's just genetics, trial and error. Some of those ideas got to get weeded out of the gene pool. But not all divergent thoughts are good. You know, we have rules in place for a reason. Sometimes you wander into the woods and you find some delicious mushrooms for, for lunch and sometimes you bring back a plague that kills your entire tribe. Some open people's genetic purpose is just to try out an idea, see if it works, and if it fails, they die, and that's that. Some overly open people might have ideas that are just stupid, dangerous, and self-destructive, and those people are just gonna get weeded out of the gene pool and it won't really matter. Hi, how's it going? So I wanna talk now about meta-frameworks, which are frameworks about frameworks. This channel used to be defined by a meta-framework called anti-centrism. Anti-centrism is a meta-framework because it incorporates a bunch of different smaller political frameworks within it. The framework zooms out of the axioms of one political ideology and instead looks at many different political ideologies to come to an overarching conclusion about how all those different political ideologies should act. Some axioms that make up the anti-centrist framework might be something like people agree more than they disagree, the left-right divide is mostly made up by people to keep us separated, extremists dictate the direction of change in the world, liberal democracy is failing, and supposedly competing political ideologies can work together when it benefits both of them. You know, wacky satirical stuff like that. I deal in meta frameworks because it's advice about advice. It's not what to think, but it's how to think about things. I've already given you some meta frameworks. One meta framework is never fall into noise, which is to say, pick a framework, buddy, because if you don't, you're gonna be disassociated. Some people might like living in noise and say, ah, I disagree with the axiom of you should not live in noise, but I don't like living in noise. And so I say, you shouldn't live in noise. And so pick a framework. That's the meta framework. Anti-centrism is a meta framework. It's the framework that I've been using on this channel to describe things and to talk about things and to think about things. But underlying that, there was a meta, meta framework, which is something along the lines of, I am an artist and I seek to use these lenses to articulate things and to talk about things and to describe the world. And so I take out this lens, which I'm going to call Dreg, and I'm gonna use him from now on, whenever I feel like it, to talk about political stuff. I am doing a politics show on Twitch. I will sometimes use this framework. Go subscribe there. We're gonna stream, let's say every Sunday, but realistically, probably, you know, whenever I want.